What is going on everybody? Welcome to the 20th T Kinter tutorial video in our uh, T Kinter mega series, so to speak here, where we are making an actual program. So, uh, where we left off, we've got, you know, a nice baseline and we've got all of our options and stuff that we want um, in our program, but we haven't actually tied in any back-end operation to uh, do them. So, for example, we hit SMA and it doesn't really do anything. It does set it, right? It, we do set that, that parameter, but we're not actually doing anything. So, uh, in this video, in the coming videos, we're going to start actually um, applying you know, some function and some code to uh, those operations. So the first thing we need to do is, is we're, in order to do this, we're going to be using non-tick data. Um, and to display non-tick data, we're going to be using uh, candlestick charts uh, as well as we want to be able to plot with uh, dates um, and that sort of thing and modify the ticker or the, uh, the actual axis labels. So we're going to be importing a few more matplotlib things. Generally, it's a good idea to go ahead and just kind of group um, group some things together that are like from the exact same module. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and move this from matplotlib import plot plot just right up here. Uh, and now we're going to import two more things. We're going to say uh, uh, import matplotlib.dates as mdates. And then we're also going to go ahead and import matplotlib.ticker as m ticker. So this will allow us to kind of modify the dates and as well as modify our, our ticker uh, information. Now, scrolling down a little bit, um, right underneath resample size, let's go ahead and add in data pace, which uh, we start off with, say, tick data. Eventually, we're going to go ahead and change that, but for now, um, oh, whoops, <laughs> database right there. Harrison, you're blind. Anyway, uh, just edit in tick instead of one day because that is what we're starting off with. Okay, so now what we want to go ahead and do is we're going to come down into our animate function, and now we need to go ahead and add in where are you animate. Okay, so right now the only thing our animation function is even capable of doing is animating tick data, whereas really we only want to animate tick data when that's the user's choice. So now we need to go ahead and program this block of code, or really this function, to support various forms of whether, you know, data frames basically, or, or data time frames. So uh, we're going to go ahead and global the refresh rate. And we're going to global dat counter. And I'm not really sure if. You know, we don't really have a refresh rate up here yet, but that's okay. We'll leave that there for now, but we'll have to add that in. Uh, so coming back down to anime. So that, just for the record, that's not really a syntax error, but we don't actually have anything uh, corresponding to refresh rate, but we'll deal with that later. So the questions that get asked here are, first of all, in order to animate, we need a few things to happen. First of all, we, we if you recall, we are offering the... Uh, the choice to either pause or resume the graph uh, from running. So the first question that sh we should ask to, in this entire function is if chart load. Okay, so if chart load is true, then go ahead and, and continue on. If it's not true, we don't need to do anything else. Okay, now I'm going to make some, some more space. We're going to have a lot of statements here. Um, the next question we're going to ask here is p about pain count. We haven't really talked about that. Um, the idea is eventually we can add multiple panes and, and have you know comparison charts, stuff like that. Uh, for now, we're just kind of putting it in there for the future possibility, uh, but it's not really doing anything at the moment. So anyway, uh, if pain count equals one, um, and then the next thing we're going to do is if data pace equals tick. So this is basically where all of this code needs to go. Of course, the only problem is uh, this is only BTCE 
tick data. So we not only do we need to put this block of code under there, we need to put the, the code necessary to do all of the other exchanges. And as you'll see, they're each a little different. Um, luckily, it's besides just tick data, um, we're going to be pulling all the data from C of BTC. So that basically normalizes all of the data. So that'll be a lot easier to handle and, and deal with. So anyway, if data pace equals tick, great. We're going to run a try. And we're basically going to uh, try this block of code, right? So, so we'll take this, and now we need to tab this over to fit underneath try. So one, two, three, four tabs were required. Bring this up like that. Um, and then the next thing that we're going to do is let's come down here. Um, and we need to throw in an exception. So we're going to say try, and then it does that. And then we say uh, accept exception as e print um, failed because of comma e uh, if you are on win or uh, python 2.7 except exception comma e not as e moving on so now that should work let's see if we got any issues we do pain count is not defined Great. So let's go ahead and just define pain count at the top here as equals one. Uh, don't we have pain? No, I guess not. Okay. Pain count equals one. Run it again. Agree. Cool. So that's all fine and dandy. Uh, the only issue at this point is not only do we get tick data from, uh, or at least price data from ticks, or price data in the tick data, <laughs> that's what I'm looking for. Uh, not only do we get pricing data, we also get volume data. So it's kind of useful to know uh, what volume was involved in these prices. So uh, it's kind of silly not to put it up there. So let's go ahead and talk about how we're gonna put that up there. So um, coming down to animate, let me just do, I'm just gonna do control F, it's popped up in a different window, but here we go. Animate brings me down here. And uh, now we're ready to change up a few things. First of all, let's go ahead and we're going to define two subplots. So we're going to have A equals something and then A2 equals something. A is going to equal plt.subplot2grid. If you're not familiar with subplot2grid, it's a little different than um, the typical one where you, you basically say the subplot equals like it's in a two by one and this is number two, something like that. Uh, subplot to grid works a little bit different. You basically say what the full grid size is and then you say the starting point and then you say you know the dimensions. So for example here, subplot to grid, the full grid is a six by four. So that's the first parameter. Notice that that's a tuple as a parameter. Um, the starting point of this uh, plot or subplot rather is gonna be zero, zero, so the top left corner. And then we're going to say the row span. So this is how many like rows is it going to span? Crazy. And then col span. This is how many columns it will span. So this is going to span five rows. That leaves one row remaining. And the columns, it's a full width. Okay. That's why we're talking about pain count because later on we could say this is part of a 12 by 4 or something like that, and it could take up less space. And then we can put more stuff on there. So. This way, it really lets you customize very nicely. Um, so with some forward thinking here, that's how we're going to do it. Next, we're gonna say A2 is basically the same thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this, paste it. The only difference is it doesn't start in the same spot and it does not span five rows, it only spans one row. Finally, there's one more parameter we're gonna add here, uh, and this one is gonna be share X, and that's gonna be A. And what this means is it shares the X axes with A. So as you zoom in to one of the subplots, the other subplot is affected. It will be zoomed in to the exact same degree. And if you move around, that kind of stuff, it will be identical. So they'll always be aligned. Since we're dealing with date data, it's really important. Um, but really, a lot of times, it's really important. So anyway, if you want to learn more about the customization, definitely check out the uh, matplot, the you know customizing matplotlib series I have although we're gonna be doing a fair amount of customization here. So the next thing that we wanna do is we're going to change, let's see. I'm gonna go ahead and, cause we're gonna to have to plot a little different. So I, 
we'll come down here, I guess, and we're gonna say um, we're gonna say data date stamp, and that's gonna equal np for numpy. It's gonna be a numpy array of the data timestamp, which is a uh, Unix timestamp. Um, and then we're gonna say dot as type, so this kind of converts it for us. And we're gonna convert it to NumPy's date times 64s. Okay, so pretty much the same thing that we did down here. We're just we're basically adding this uh, instead. So we've done that. Now what we want to do is we're gonna say um, yeah we didn't do that either. So all dates, all dates equals data date, oops, we need to have this, date stamp, and then dot to list, because we're not able to pass a NumPy uh, array through. I suppose it would be a series. Anyway, uh, we've done that. Now we're going to go ahead and talk to buys here. We don't need this anymore, and we don't need this anymore. So coming out these lines, that's wasted processing. Uh, next, we uh, like I said, we get volume data. So now we want to add in uh, the calculation of volume, or the basically attribution of volume. Uh, volume equals data amount. So it's just part of the data JSON that we're getting, right? It's it's in that JSON already. So and it's just under the um, the label of amount. Uh, that's how much the volume is. So then we run an a dot clear, totally fine. Um, now uh, we've got buy dates, sell dates. That's fine. The only thing that we're going to add now is let's go before the legend. We'll say a two dot fill underscore between, and this will be all dates because this is volume data. Uh, then you specify when you do fill between you it fills okay so you have to specify what the minimum point of that fill is going to be in our case that's going to be a zero um, you can do really cool stuff with fill between by the way this is obviously not a variable but there are ways you can pass variables through there and you can make some really cool graphs uh, but maybe more on that way later um, the data that we're plotting now is volume and then we're going to set the face color uh, equal to, uh, we'll use this, this color here. So let's just uh, copy, paste, boom. So that fills it between, that's why we need to set all dates because we already, we got the buy and sell dates, but volume is um, basically every data point is volume. So that's why we needed to do that. So um, now the next thing that we want to do is add, let's see, we don't really, we need to add the axes layer or the uh, conversion now. So the next thing we need to do is a dot x axes dot set underscore major underscore locator. And we're going to do m ticker dot max n locator and then five. And what this does is it sets the, the maximum amount of like actual marks, right? So we're displaying full dates here. So obviously if we displayed like 50 of them, we wouldn't be able to see them anymore. And so there are some ways that you can have many. So the default is to display them horizontally, but you can actually set write some code to like make it display like diagonally. So you can have diagonal dates and you can have more marks and it. Like it's I don't know, a better way to, so they don't run over each other. Cause if, if you program it, and you allow it to, it will, they will, text will just run over itself. It's really ugly. Uh, so we've done that. Now we want to set the formatter and then we'll do one more thing, um, but I'll show you why in a moment. So we'll do a.x axes dot set underscore major underscore formatter. And here we're gonna format how the date actually looks and we're gonna use mdates.date for matter and then here you put the actual date code okay so for a full year uh, you do percent capital Y then we want to just superimpose a dash in there and then a month is lowercase m that will be a numerical month you could also do an uppercase m for the uh, written out month I believe and then percent day 
uh, for the number as opposed to the D for the written out day, space, and then we want the hours, colon, minutes. We, it is tick data, so I suppose we could have seconds as well. Um, that wouldn't really hurt. Um, we'll just leave it this way. Uh, so we've done that, and now finally, uh, let's go ahead and run that and see how we're looking at the moment. Agree. Uh, got what that was an issue we didn't get any reason for that issue database tick we are running hopefully tick i believe up here oh we did get what did we We don't have any like major error. Uh, let's go animate. Try. Mm, this should show up. Uh, let me just write a simple print statement here. So it's getting through all of the code. Um, not really sure why it's not. And we're also not getting our uh, two panes there. Uh, okay, well we have, pro yeah, okay. So we probably, um, we've done probably some stupid stuff here. Um, so first let's go up to the top here and we have F equals figure. That's fine. We're going to comment out a there and then let's go back down into animate here. We've got like some of this old code basically. So we've got a and a two a dot plot is fine. A dot a two. That should be fine. I'm a little confused why that wouldn't, uh, Maybe it like won't replace its own subplots. I'm not too sure. Let me. Now oh, it's even a bigger mess. Okay, hold on. Let's close out of this. That's fine. Okay, the problem is there's basically two forms of figure. Okay, so you've got just figure that we've imported and been we've been using from map from matplotlib dot figure, and then you've got plt dot figure so what we're gonna go ahead and do is first of all we need to comment out this we're not going to use that form anymore and then come down here and where you have f equals figure f now equals plt dot figure so save and run that and hopefully we should have a superior graph yes okay so here we go we've got uh, the volume data here and then obviously tick data this is pretty boring looking data mostly because um, you've got you know spikes of volume that are pretty much overshadowing the other trades. Most trades are pretty small, uh, so there's just really not much volume to see there. But obviously, some of these like have some pretty large volume to them. Anyway, um, so that's it for this video. Uh, we've got basically the tick set up, and in the next video, we'll add some of the other exchanges so we can view tick data from the other exchanges, and then we'll start adding in the time frames and all that. So anyways, I uh, hope you guys have been enjoying. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until next time.